Hello and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is my place on YouTube and the internet to talk about all things crochet and knitting and crafty, all of that lovely good stuff. Um, my name is Ali. I live in the very southeast of Kent uh, with my husband and our two daughters. And you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Starry Eyes Ali. You can also find me on my other channel, my vloggy channel, um, where I talk about more day-to-day -day stuff, crafting stuff as well, and drawing and things. Um, and that is This Little Wonderful Life, which is linked underneath. Uh, my latest daily vlog series was in March, um, or regular vlog series was in March, if you're interested in that kind of thing. But here we talk about all of the crafty stuff. So this is a lovely long chat about all of my knitting and crochet projects, things I'm working on. We're gonna have a chat about some finished objects um, I've got a few little finished objects now. I don't, you know, if you're if you're new here, don't expect the very latest hot right now sweater pattern. <laughs> that happens occasionally, but I'm a little bit more eclectic than that. Um, and I think the three finished objects I have to share with you today are all a bit weird. Uh, but that that you'll see, you'll see when we get to it. I'm going to talk about some works in progress. Some incoming bits, which I haven't done for a while. Some make-alongs that we've got running. I've got two, the Dodgy Bag Mal and a year-long Amagurumi along. And I'll give you, uh, I'll update you on all the details of those later on. Some books and stuff where I just talk about what we've been watching and uh, what I'm reading and uh, audio books and stuff like that. And then, and finally, right at the end, to mop up anything I've missed, maybe talk about the shop, my Etsy shop a bit and um, just jabber on about life in general. Okay, so uh, I've had a bit of trouble finding time to sit down and film this. I was hoping to film it a little bit earlier, but uh, we're coming out of lockdown, a very long lockdown here in the UK. Restrictions are easing, it fills really rapidly. And uh, with that, life is speeding up again. My two girls are uh, obviously in school. Their lives are getting busier now that they can see friends and they can go back to their after school clubs and their hobbies and things that they do. So there's a lot more running around again and uh, friends over and cooking tea for more than just the four of us and so on and so forth. So things are getting busier. I'm back at work and um, in the office, the museum where I work um, has reopened. It opened last week, which is really great. It's really early in the morning, by the way. It's about 10 to nine on Thursday morning. So the light is really weird. You're gonna see shadows all around me for a little while because the, the sun hasn't quite got high up enough in the sky. It's a really sunny day today, which is quite unusual for what the weather has been like recently. It's been really wet and rainy. Wet and rainy, wet and cold. <laughs> and uh, I think we're just about to enter a period of better weather. Well, depending on how you look at it, rainy and cold is fine by me. <laughs> But the next week or so is going to be sunny and about 19.20. Now, that's okay. 19.20, fine. It could stay like that all summer and I'd be perfectly happy. Uh, but it's gloriously sunny today. I'll try to remember to take a little video at the end of the view that I look out of my bedroom window at, um, which is across sort of fields, houses. But if I look that way, fields. Because um, it's really beautiful. It makes me want to go out and go for a walk. It's lovely. My husband is at work, which is also quite unusual because he started a new job in December and the first time he actually went into his office and met any of his colleagues was uh, this time last week. No, this time two weeks ago. So that's been quite unusual. It's been really good for him to get out of the house, learn the route to work and so on. He's, he's not going to be going into the office full time. He'll be in three days a week on the, on the days when I don't work. And then on the days when I work, he'll be working from home. So that's hopefully going to work out quite well. My youngest daughter, however, is here at home, even though it's a school day, because she has fallen foul of a nasty little throat bug that's going around her primary school class at the moment. It was bound to happen now that they're all back and things are opening up. The primary school viruses are back, which is really weird because nobody's been ill in like forever because we've just lived in this like very, really hygienic bubble. <laughs> Uh, so she's downstairs for the second day in a row off school. She's a lot better today. She woke up a lot brighter, but she's still got a sore throat and is a bit stuffy. So she's going to stay at home just one more day. And then hopefully that'll be enough rest for her to get back to normal. There's no point in sending her back when she's not quite ready. Um, I can tell when they're sort of 
hanging it out a bit and when they're not and she's definitely just needs another day on the sofa so that's what she's doing today she's promised to not interrupt unless some this is an emergency she's very happy watching that so raven anyway that's enough of that i'm going to take a big swig of my tea which is in my ridiculous gigantic yarn bowl mug <laughs> which I really love. It's now my official podcasting mug. It was a gift from my friend Annette in beautiful Denmark, where we hope to get back to maybe next year. Maybe if things continue to look good, we'll get back to Denmark next year. Anyway, I need a swig of tea and then we'll get going. Was that all a bit manic, that starting bit? I have written and highlighted in green at the top, relax, deep breaths, in case I start to get overexcited and run away with things. Right, let's get stuck in to finished objects. Have you got your, have you got a cup of tea? Have you got your cup of coffee? Maybe your lunch, glass of wine? God, it'd be nice to have a glass of wine. I don't think at uh, five to nine on a Thursday morning is the right time. Though. Um, let's get stuck in with finished objects. Okay, so I've got three. I'm going to start with the most sensible and work my way to the most ridiculous. <laughs> so the first one is my mitt, my crochet mitt design. That I've been working on which sounds ridiculous when I say it because I don't design stuff although what I'm about to show you after this is going to disprove that uh, so these are my uh, mitts that I've designed with the purpose of doing a tutorial um, either one video tutorial or a little series of how to make them so it's kind of like a beginner course in how to make a really simple pair of crochet mitts so I've been writing up, it took me ages to work out the pattern. I, I started off um, making granny squares and sewing them together and adding a border, but I didn't like the way it sat and it, it seemed a bit faffy to have all that sewing. So in the end, I worked out how to do still granny stitch, but going backwards and forwards in sort of rounds, if that makes sense. So I could create a thumb hole and then I've done a back post front post double crochet um, ribbing at the top and the bottom so and I, there's two sizes there's kind of like the normal size the medium size and then a smaller size and that is because I've got really small hands and when I did my first sample it fit perfectly and then I realized actually that probably wouldn't fit someone else perfectly um, because I do have like ridiculously small hands it's a family trait <laughs> so this is the finished thing and it's in such gorgeous yarn I almost wish it wasn't 20 degrees so that it was autumn so that I could wear these they're called the Heath mitts um, named after our local Heathland where we spent many many hours walking around during all the lockdowns we're very lucky to have it so nearby look at that yarn they're really simple little mitts. They're designed to start just below the hand, so they sit right on your wrist. But I have included instructions for how to make them much, much longer, and I am going to make a sample to show how they look much, much longer. Well, my hands are getting hot. Um, so you've got a front post, back post, half double crochet. This is in US terms, by the way, because I do work in US terms. I need to remember to write that on the little pattern I've written out. Um, uh, so I've got that as the rib at the bottom, then I've got the granny stitch thing, uh, rows going up the hand, and then at the top I've got um, front post, back post, double crochet ribbing, which is a bit deeper than the bottom one, which gives a really nice neat sort of ribbing crochet finish. And then there's a little border that goes around the thumb that I've worked out as well. So I'm really, really pleased with them. Every time I talk about them, I end up doing my 80s um, thing, like that. <laughs> I should have called them the 1980s mitts. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take them off because my hands are getting very, very hot. This yarn, by the way, is... Oh, these are, are made with DK yarn. I used a 3mm hook to make mine. Um, and I am work, I'm in the process of working out the gauge. This is all very new to me, writing it as a pattern, and I very much wanted to write it out as a proper pattern, so that even if you're following along with the tutorial, you can have the fully printed out version in front of you. And uh, the yarn is DK by Craft House Magic, lovely Ellie, and the um, name of it, let me get the label, it's called Land of Make Believe. 
It was a lovely gift from a podcast viewer. It was a really, um, it was a surprise. It came direct from Ellie via a podcast viewer. Beverly, thank you very much, last year. Yeah, it's Land of Make Believe and it's in her DK base, uh, 75, 25 superwash merino nylon and you get 225 meters and 100 grams and that is Ellie's little logo over at Craft House and Magic. She's also on YouTube. She posts a video every week, unlike me, who posts sporadically. I hope not sporadically. <laughs> Name that film. Um, where, am I, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so that's the first um, size, the sort of normal size, I'm calling it medium size. And then I made the smaller size again that I'd originally done so that I could write the pattern out. Um, it's only slightly smaller. It's only actually a um, 3DC cluster, a sort of granny cluster, one cluster smaller. But it makes quite a big difference um, to how it fits on your hand. It fits a lot snugger. So I've done this in just a plain blue. And I, this is um, a blue that I hand dyed myself. And it's actually from the bargain bin at John Lewis. It's their own um, just uh, cream plain um, DK uh, merino. And they had some in the bargain bucket and I bought some ages ago and I dyed it blue. So uh, this is just the smaller size. I don't, don't know if you can see that they fit a lot snugger on my hands. So these are perfect for, say, if you're working in a cold office like me, I, I work in an office with sash windows, it's a really old building, and it's winter and the wind is whistling under the sash windows. These are perfect because you can still type, you still got all the movement of your thumb and everything, and but it just gives you that little bit of warmth and that's kind of what they were designed for. And in my head, sort of imagining those early spring, um, early autumn walks on the heath, where you don't need anything super cosy, but just a little something to keep the chill off. Um, so for me, these are the perfect size because they do fit that, that bit um, closer to my hands. And I'm really pleased with myself for working it out because it took me forever. It took me forever to work it out. I purposely didn't look at anything for inspiration. I wanted to, I thought, do you know what? You've been crocheting forever. Like I've been crocheting for over a decade now. I must have learned something that could help me to come up with a design from the knowledge that's already in my own head. Why do these look a different size to one another? What have I done? One looks smaller than the other. Why? They fit the same. Oh no, maybe I used the wrong, did I use the wrong hook for the second one? Oh, it doesn't matter, they fit fine and they're only my sample. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased that I managed to come up with it and I've written out the pattern and my friend Sarah and my sister Jenny have both tested it to, to see if there are any mistakes or anything and they, it seems to have come out okay. So now all I need to do is finalise that pattern, make it look nice, put some nice notes in it and film my tutorial. So I don't know whether to film it as one video, just beginning to end, here's how you do it, or split it up into maybe three or four videos, sort of uh, bottom cuff, um, wrist, thumb bit to the top, and then the rib, and then modifications or something. I'm not sure, let me know if you would prefer if, you, if you're a beginner crocheter and you'd be interested in learning how to make something like this, let me know if your preference would be to just have it in one big video or maybe three or four littler videos that you could then just skip to the next one when you're ready. Because I can't quite decide. It's taken me forever to get to this point, so getting to the next point of filming the videos and deciding how to produce them and, and get them out there is going to be a whole other thing in my mind. Um, yeah, so that is the, the officially named Heath Mitts by me. <laughs> and it's all been living in my lovely lobster bag, which was made for me by a lovely podcast viewer called Callie. And it's got beautiful lobster pattern and anchors. And it's been my little design bag for the last few months. So I'll pop all these back. And watch this space for news on when that comes out and you can make your own little... Heath mitts. It's a little bit grown up and scary, isn't it? Having a, a pattern that you've designed, even if it's a really, really simple one. <laughs> oh, more tea, more tea. 
Okay, so that's about as normal as it gets for finished objects. So what I'm about to show you next, I'm really pleased with. You may think it's completely and utterly bonkers, but I'm really pleased with it. And I, it is a pattern. I've written this up and it was a, on a complete whim. I've had it in my head for ages, this idea. And I started fiddling about. I think I was a little, I, I was given a bit of confidence by successfully managing to work out how to construct, you know, the world's simplest mitten. Um, and I thought, okay, so I've been making amigurumi for many, many years now, you know, using other people's absolutely fantastic patterns. Maybe I could design this thing I've got in my head using the knowledge that I've got. And it took me a few attempts, but I managed to get the shape that I wanted. So I'm now going to introduce you to it. Okay, so I wanted to design, well, the name of my channel is Little Drops of Wonderful. And I sell a pin in my shop, an enamel pin, uh, which says you are a little drop of wonderful. And that is a, a pin that I designed myself. I did a little doodle, um, which then, I, I don't know, have I ever shown you the doodle that I did that then became the pin? I wonder if I've got that. Where would it be? Hang on a minute, I'm gonna go and get it. So because it kind of builds up to the story of this. Right, I'll just run downstairs to get my little um, doodle book. I've been keeping this for years. I buy these little books whenever we go to France um, and we go to Carrefour or Intermarche or somewhere and they sell these little books that have, they're little and they've got the squared pages. So I always stock up on them <laughs> whenever we go to France because I use them for lists, I lose, use them for everything. This particular one is my official doodle book where if I'm feeling particularly anxious, this is a book where I don't have to worry because I don't have to worry about the paper. I don't have to worry that I'm ruining an expensive sketchbook or anything like that. It's lit and I can let the girls do their own doodles in it and I just don't have to feel precious about it at all. I can do just um, little practice um, doodle drawings from things on YouTube, like those things. I can let the girls scribble in it. I can do little designs. Oh, I forgot about that design. Ooh, might have to do that. Keep that secret for now. Um, yeah, I can do just little pictures and less sort of drawings and more sort of doodly drawings. Someone sitting on a pile of books. Um, and I also write little notes and play about when, if I've got new pens or pen, uh, paints or stuff just to see what the colours look like and so on. Anyway, um, in this little doodle book, Let's call it my little sanity book. <laughs> One day I came up with this design. So this is the very original sketch I did for my little drop of wonderful pin. And my little drop of wonderful pin, I don't have one um, that I can reach. So I will put a picture of it up on the screen so you can see what it looks like now. And I sell them in my shop. And obviously it's the name of my channel as well. So I wanted to do some kind of crochet related thing that related to this. And I have managed it. I wanted to get the perfect droplet shape. I will show you the uh, the evolution <laughs> of the droplet. So the first one I came up with was, which one was it? This one, no, it was this one. Um, I wanted to make it top down because that would keep the stitches of the crochet the, uh, for the amigurumi tighter at the top. I find that if I have the decrease stitches towards the top, it loosens it a bit more. And I prefer to decrease at the bottom where you need to have like a flatter surface. So this was my first attempt, but I didn't like the shape of the droplet. It wasn't quite right. So then I did it bottom up because I found it easier to work out the shaping bottom up. So, and I was a bit happier with the shaping, but not still not 100% on the shaping. But I don't know if you can see, here's the one that's top down. So you can see the stitches are quite neat and tight. And the one that's bottom up, where I'm doing the decreases as I get to the top, in my mind anyway, that doesn't look as neat. So I went back to the drawing board. I actually got some smaller yarn because I was just grabbing cotton from my vast stash of cotton. Thanks to a lovely view of this podcast, I have an enormous stash of cotton to work with, which is just, 
I've sorted it all out by the way. She sent me this huge box and I've sorted it out into colors and weights and everything. So I know exactly what I've got and what I've got to work with. And the, fe the sort of feeling that gives me is amazing. It's such an inspiring, I don't feel, I, I f often feel overwhelmed by having too much yarn and stuff, but I don't know, something about the cotton that doesn't overwhelm me. I just see possibilities in it. Anyway, I then came up, oh look, there's all, little, there's all yellow fluff where I marked my stitches with a piece of yellow yarn. I then um, worked it out again and uh, managed to come up with this shape, which I was a lot happier with. And this was a top-down shape. I was a lot happier with, but still not quite. I wanted to make the top of that droplet just that little bit longer and the transition into the... It needed more, to use a term from the uh, Great Pottery Throwdown programme, it needed more bulbosity. <laughs> and then I managed it. And I've written everything down, so I'm pretty sure I've got everything I could possibly need to make this over again. So I'm gonna test it again and write it out. Um, I'm just gonna hide part of this first. So here is the finished droplet shape. I went back up to an Aran weight cotton. I'm really pleased with it. It is top down. It does make it slightly more fiddly when you start. But once you're past the very first round, it gets a lot easier. So when I do sort of release this pattern into the world, um, you will hate me for the first two rounds and then you'll be fine. And then I designed some little arms and legs. <laughs> so he looks like my little droplet, my little drop of wonderful. Here he is with his arms and legs. I hate doing limbs on amigurumi as much as I adore making amigurumi. It's always the limbs that I hate doing. These are really easy and they don't require stuffing and each of them, own, you don't even have to mark it, you just have to count. Um, they're really easy to do. Now I was gonna do his face and get that all sewn on so you could see how I envisaged the face, but I ran out of time and I just, there's a little phrase that's playing around in my mind that I've heard recently, which is good enough is good enough. <laughs> it is ready, I just haven't embroidered a face. And the, the original idea behind it, not only to have a little cute um, 3D amigurumi version of you know, what my channel is all about really, is um, it was inspired by Dammit dolls. Have you heard of Dammit dolls? Which are sort of rag doll things that are completely soft, they're made of fabric, and they're designed that you can whack them against things <laughs> to sort of let out frustration. Um, and that the idea behind this originally was to sort of do a sort of gosh darn it droplet, <laughs> a little bit less harsh than damn it, gosh darn it, <laughs> a little bit more downton, um, and you could throw it. So all of these three uh, prototypes have been thoroughly tested by Dan and the girls. They're surprisingly bouncy, and what you do is you get really frustrated really annoyed at something, someone's annoyed you or said something or you've messed up and you go Arr! Arr! and you chuck it and it can't do any damage because it's completely soft, it's just filled with polyfill and if it gets all misshapen you can just shape it back into its bulbosity shape, <laughs> its shape of bulbosity again and that was the idea behind it or you know you could squeeze it out of frustration Arr! or you know, you could just cuddle it, cuddle up to a friend to calm you down. So it's kind of like an anti-stress little drop of wonderful. And for that reason, I'm not putting safety eyes on it. Um, I'm gonna work out how to embroider a couple of different face designs and include that in my instructions. Uh, so this is pretty much done. And um, I couldn't be prouder of myself really. And I don't say that often and I don't say that lightly, but this was exactly what I had in my head and I realise that this is ridiculous. I realise that, that there are a lot more complicated things out there and designers um, designing the most amazing colour work things and complicated sweaters and incredibly detailed amigurumi but I am really proud of this. So I'm going to get this written up um, to share with you all if you want to make your own little drop of wonderful and this kind of ties in I'm having a year long, well it wasn't supposed to be year long, um, make along uh, for this channel. It's an Ami along, it's called the Eldao Ami along 
and there's a Ravelry group for it and we just chat in there and share ideas and share what we're making. We share it on Instagram with the hashtag and it's just for Amigurumi to get you stuck in. And it's been such a joy, that thread to watch and, and the hashtag to watch and to see what everyone's doing and discussing. And But I'll talk about that later. Um, and that'll be running to the end. I'll talk about it later. Stop going off on a tangent. So watch this space. My little drop of wonderful will be unleashed onto the world soon. <laughs> We've finished finished objects with a found object. A found object is something, well, so around me, on the, the bit that where I'm casting a shadow over here, this is all brand new shiny wardrobes. <laughs> brand new wardrobes. I love them so much. Um, we had a big, well, we're still in the midst of a bedroom renovation, but the hard bit's done, the wardrobes are in. So I had to empty the entire room, and in doing so, I found a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, I've kind of been accidentally embarked on a kind of massive life organisation. And um, a lot of stuff that I found was kind of half-finished things, lurking in boxes, like it's things that I started over a decade ago. And one of these things was, you know, obviously I've had these sort of desires to create my own things for some time. I just have never had the sort of confidence to do it. Because this was evidenced by the fact that I found um, a sort of half, almost completed, project where I'd obviously decided I was going to make a crochet physical representation of a hug, <laughs> of a cuddle. So I had um, started with Peyton's smoothie yarn, which I don't use anymore but I used to love it when I first started, um, making a little round sort of bag shape and with co colour work crochet, what would that be in? Crochet intarsia? Crochet... I know there's a word for it where you do colour work in crochet. God dear, I think I'd be a bit more expert than this by now. Anyway, I'd um, fashioned the words hug onto it. <laughs> and I found, I found it like here, it was here. And I thought, well, there's no way I can add any crochet to the top. Oh, sorry, it was, it was here. It was, it was the full height of it. And I, there was no way I could add crochet to the top because um, I, I had no idea what hook I was using or what tension I was working to and it could have really ruined it. So I just um, ripped the yarn back to one of the corners, one of the edges, and just sewed the top. But before I did that, I added some little eyes and a nose. Uh, <laughs> and it just so happened where I've sewed it together, it's kind of um, bent upwards like that to create what looks like little ears. And I've created a crochet hunk. <laughs> this is not the most... I mean, I did this years ago, um, but I like it. I like the idea of it. So Phoebe saw me doing it and she was like, what's that? Can I have it? So this is now Phoebe's hug. She thinks it's, it looks like a fox. So she calls it the hug fox. Uh, but Dan thinks it looks like an owl. I think it just looks like a hug. So that's my little finished found object. I told you it was going to get more ridiculous as we got towards the end. <laughs> And this can go back on Phoebe's bed. Actually, I'll take it down to her. She's currently on the sofa watching um, Raven, um, That's So Raven, which she's, at, she's finished. She's watched Raven's Home, the whole series, twice now. And she's on the second run through of um, That's So Raven. She just loves loves her. We all do. She, it's so... The, 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 is it Raven Simone, the actress that plays um, Raven? Um, then and now is just she is so funny. She she makes me laugh so much. She's just she's like um she's a real sort of uh, clownish comedian. You know she's very sort of she's got very comedy. For, anyway. A tangent. I would just recommend it if you've got kids. It's a really funny show. Hug. Right, let's move on to works in progress before I go off on any more random tangents. Uh, works in progress always start with the usual disclaimer that I only picked the very, very tip of a very large iceberg. I'm only going to talk about uh, two today, I think. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about two. I don't ha only have two works in progress. Do not be alarmed. It's just that that's what I'm choosing to talk about today. I could do an entire five hour episode on my works in progress or like my works in project bags waiting to be started. This is the feather weight. No, feather, why can I never get this right? Feather light or feather weight? 
featherweight cardigan. I need to remember that. Like I need to imagine a boxer wearing it. So, and then I'll remember. It's the featherweight cardigan, which is a terrible printout by Hannah Fetic. Um, and I am very much, I'm very much enjoying working on this. I am using three yarns by the same dyer. The dyer being third volt yarns, who I love. I love her yarn. Here is her logo. Um, her name is Lola, she's a UK dyer and she, um, a lot of her colours are inspired by quite um, sort of geeky things like board games and sci-fi and stuff like that. And this particular colour, or the main colours that I'm working with, are two different dye lots of a colour called Mazakine, which is named for a character in the Netflix series Lucifer, which I need to get back to watching. And Mazakine's a fantastic character, she's a demon. Um, and this is designed for her. This this one here is the original one I bought, and this one here is a later dye lot. So you can see they are quite different. And then at one point I went back to get another skein of it because I'm a little bit strangely obsessed with this colour, <laughs> and she didn't have it. So I bought just a one-off. This is one of a kind that she did called Coffee. There we go. They are nice sort of complementary colours there. So I decided to make the featherweight cardigan and because I didn't have all one colour, I just decided to stripe them and that has turned out to be the best thing I could possibly have done because it's made it such a fun thing to knit. You know when you knit something with stripes or scrappy socks or something, you've always got a little section to be working towards the end and it just makes it so much more interesting to work on. Um, and I have now finished the arms and I'm ready to pick up to do the collar that runs all the way around. In fact, I could have picked up the stitches to start it last night, but I knew I was podcasting today and I didn't want it all bunched up on the needles. Um, so this is how it's looking. This is the, the right side. Um, it's a, a quite a cropped little cardigan. It just sits on my hips. Really, as you would expect from a, um, a pattern called Featherweight, it's a really lovely lightweight cardigan. Um, I've done both the arms. And I've done them, to, they finish just, just past my elbow, which is where I wanted them. This is a little throw-on cardigan I'm making myself. I've matched the stripes, I've just worked in the same pattern for the stripes. And I finished off the second sleeve last night, and I've used Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for the cuffs. This, I haven't, obviously this isn't blocked, which isn't too bad. When I was looking at it last night, I was a bit worried it didn't look very neat. But actually I quite like it. And when it's all stretched out on your arm, it, you know, it's just going to look like a cuff. No one's going to know what bind off you use. No one's going to care. Unless you're at yarn festival. In which case people probably will care. I'm going to... I, I mean, there's not much to say about this other than I am making... Uh, what size am I making? I'm making the third size from smallest, which is the bust 38... 0.75 um, and it is going to come out quite um, little and snug on me um, and I'm definitely going to make another one because I can already tell that this is a real sort of staple thing that I would definitely wear. I do love wearing cardigans. I've got some yarn in mine, some yellow. I've also got some beautiful red yarn that um, from the Knitting Swede that I bought originally to make this um, but I'm thinking of making the next size up just to have a, a, a little bit more of a, a less negative ease version um, but I've loved working on it this is my first sort of proper knitted garment um, with arms and everything um, so I'm, I'm yeah couldn't be happier with it can't wait to get that collar done it's going to be quite the feat the collar because you start at the bottom edge work all the way around the back down the other side and then you have to work about two inches or so of one by one ribbing <laughs> and that's going to be a lot of stitches that's going to be a lot of stitches, so we'll see how I'm coping with that when we revisit this in the next episode. <laughs> That's the featherweight cardigan. How nice do those stripes look? Oh, I'm so pleased with how this has worked out. I love it. And it's living in my bag that was a gift from Donna uh, of the Inner Pickle Knitting podcast. And it is possibly my most favourite bag of all time. It's got hydrangeas on it, which I love, and it reminds me of my childhood because we always had huge and successful hydrangeas in our garden growing up. My own hydrangeas in my own garden, not so successful. I'm not very green-fingered. <laughs> our garden is a mess at the moment. 
However, we need to get it tidied up because we're getting chickens. We're getting chickens, they're arriving mid-August after we get back from our holiday in Scotland, which um, which we booked once we, it looked like, we knew we could book it and now we're like, oh, hope, uh, hope they don't close Scotland again. I really want to get up and see my family. Anyway, in case you're interested, we're going to be staying somewhere near Afford, um, near the Cairngorms in Aberdeenshire, and we cannot wait. Right, let's move on to... Oh, hang on, I was going to move on to the next thing, but I've got another uh, work in progress to share with you. Oh, and this will kind of lead me nicely on to incoming afterwards, and you'll see why in a second. This is my Just Feel Better shawl, which oddly is living in a plastic um, tub. <laughs> and that is because when I was clearing out the wardrobes, as I mentioned, I found a load of Little French Meadow minis, which I'd collected over the years from their mini skiing club. They no longer die Little French Meadow. Uh, and I always intended to use in one project, you know, all together. And I was like, right, this is silly. I can't just hold on to this yarn forever and ever and never do anything with it. I'm going to make a project, which I know I'm going to love making, crochet project, because I've made it before. Um, I absolutely loved the project. I loved the process of making it. And in the winter just gone, it was my most favourite and most worn um, handmade item. And that is the Just Feel Better Shawl by Kalisha Ryan of the Quirky Monday, Quirky Monday podcast. Um, she uh, is a free pattern. She's got another one, which I might try towards the end of the year, which is a Just Feel Festive Shawl, which is a sort of similar idea is that you can just memorize the pattern and switch your mind off and just enjoy the relaxing project, basically. So in order to make it not so jarring, so I have, I have, some, I, I have some slight issues with this project so far. I'm loving working on it. This is how it's looking. I have a very eclectic mix of minis. You can see it's already looking rather crazy. Uh, and I kind of ordered them. I laid them all out and ordered them in a very rough rainbow color. So you can see we've started with the red and we're very slowly going into kind of more orangey tones and then that will go into yellow and so on. Uh, and that was the idea, because as you can see here, we have all the colors of the rainbow to work with. And I'm holding it double with mohair which is, what is the name of this mohair? It is Rowan Kid Silk Haze. It's 70% mohair and 30% silk, which when I've been holding it against my face, feels like it doesn't react to me whatsoever. It feels perfectly soft. However, since I've started working it into this project and I sort of tested it, the moment I do it like this, now it's all crocheted up, it prickles immediately. <sighs> now, you know what it's like to knit or crochet with mohair it's not like I can frog this back easily I don't think and if I try I could end up getting in a real mess so I don't know whether to try and frog it back and hold it double with something else or, or nothing or maybe like just a lace weight plain white or grey or keep going until I run out of this first ball I've only got this amount left because this will actually form part of the um, shawl <laughs> that won't sit round directly onto my neck. So I could have it like that um, with the fuzzy bits and then maybe for the rest of it just not hold it double with the fuzzy bits or hold it double with something that's not fuzzy or is not going to bother me or stop overthinking it and just make the whole thing as I'd originally planned. But then I wouldn't want to make something which I would then never wear because that seems a bit pointless maybe it is all right i don't know what are your experiences with kid silk haze if you have any or mohair um i'm not good with alpaca i've worked that out over the years and but this stuff is i mean it is soft and you know when i run my hand over it i'm like ooh. But I don't want to make something that I'm then never going to wear because it's just itchy. And I know it's going to be bonkers. I know it's not like a nice muted colour palette of gorgeousness. I know it's going to be bonkers. But part of my enjoyment of crochet began with that kind of lack of um, caring about being aesthetic and and 
coordinated and everything and I do like to have some kind of eclectic colourful devil may care project on the go because it keeps me interested um yeah so I don't know what to do I don't know whether to just leave this as it is and then continue and just say that that's the fuzzy bit at the end or tr attempt to frog it and start again or I don't know I am all confusion as my 15 year old daughter would say but the pattern is amazing. I would really recommend it. If you are, you know, without Crojo at the moment, Just Feel Better Sure will get you back there because once you've got past like the first 10 or 11 rows, you, you it's easy. You, do, you don't even have to think about it. I just put a little stitch marker to remind me of a certain row that you get to every five rows, five or six rows. Um, and then I don't have to even think about that. But if the stitch marker fell out, I'd still be able to work out where I was. It's that easy. Can't recommend this pattern highly enough, especially as it's, I mean, it's free for goodness sake. Sorry, I was talking into my feet there. Yeah, it's free and um, it's such a good pattern and it's given me many, many hours of uh, calm, happy crafting time. Those are the only two whips I'm gonna talk about. We're gonna move on to incoming now, which I haven't done in a while. Oh, which reminds me, I said that this was gonna lead me nicely on to um, incoming didn't I and that is because I've been working this project with a three millimeter hook and the hook I've been using is this one okay it's a tulip hook so three millimeter tulip hook last episode I was uh, tagged by lovely Rel who is the dabbling hook um, she has the dabbling hook podcast and she's a designer she's on Instagram and she's just lovely and she tagged me in uh, a, a 10 crochet hook questions I think it was and I've never been tagged in anything before it was very exciting it was a lot of fun to sort of go through and answer all the questions but I kind of, kind of came to the conclusion doing that that despite my many years of crochet experience I've never really paid much attention to my tools I occasionally buy a new hook when I think it looks okay but I've never kind of experimented or or try to sort of think outside the box with my hooks, I just pick up whatever I've got. And then from eBay, um, directly from eBay, I got eBay surprised basically. Rel, bless her, had arranged, she bought me from UK sellers a couple of hooks which she had sent to me so I could try them. And one of them was this tulip one. So I put it to immediate use on my Just Feel Better short and I really like it. It's very nice. I've been very much enjoying working with it. So thank you so much, Rel, for this tulip hook. Um, I would never have even in a million years have thought to go and buy one. N I mean, how ridiculous is that? So, and this one, this is, you know, I don't know, it makes it more precious because someone was that thoughtful to do that. Yeah, and it makes this project more special as well because like the kids sell the kids silk haze obviously it, this was a lovely gift from a lady called Patricia I've got this wonderful little gift surprise hook from Rail and then I love the pattern anyway um, and the yarn you know I used to absolutely love little French meadow and it's just it all combines to make the perfect project really if only I could decide what to do about the kids silk haze um, so that she also sent me she sent me two hooks one of which I haven't tried yet it's still in the packet but it looks lovely this is a 3.5 millimeter hook and it's clover and more which I've heard a lot of you mentioned after my last episode the crochet uh, the clover and more so that's what it looks like it looks really lovely so I'm going to need to start a new project obviously that needs a 3.5 millimeter hook <laughs> And she got the sizes spot on because I would say three in the three zone is my most used hooks, I would say, probably. Um, I use four. I used to use four more than I do now, but I would say sort of the three, three, two, five, three point five, three, seven, five are where I live now. So I can't wait to try this out. I've got a couple of hooks just here that are on their way to my hook storage facility in the wardrobe that's over there. So that's going to go with those ready for selection when I find my pattern. What else have I got in coming to share with you? Oh yes, I got a lovely birthday parcel from my friend Hilary. Hi Hilary in Australia. And it's always amazing to get a little parcel in the post for your birthday. But it's even more amazing when you open it up and someone has taken the time to knit you something. 
And I, I think as, as knitters and crocheters, we, we all know how much we appreciate that. So she knit me, oh, look at this color. Oh, yellow is my absolutely most favorite color in the whole world, I love it. Look at this golden yellow color, it's, oh, is it autumn yet so I can wear it? I could probably have got away with wearing this the past week, to be honest, it's been that chilly. Oh, it's just lovely. I love it so much and even better, actually I didn't ask her, or did I? I haven't checked my messages on Ravelry in a while. I did ask her what the pattern was because, can you see there, they're owls. The border is all owls, oh my goodness. And I really wanna make one for my mum because we have a bit of a running joke in our family about, um, I don't know if I've spoken about this before, but there's a program on here in the UK called Would I Lie To You? One of the regular comedians that goes on it is called Greg Davis. And he once told a story which turned out to be true about the hoot owl of death. I'm sure I've talked about this before. I'm gonna find a link, I'm gonna find it on YouTube. It must exist and I will link the video to the hoot owl of death story. We've never laughed so much in our lives. It was just, and if anyone else had told it, it wouldn't have been funny, but because it was Greg Davis telling it, <laughs> anyway, and a hoot owl of death thing was born and um, we now try to sneak each other owl presents. <laughs> so I'd love to make her one of these maybe for Christmas because um, that would be the ultimate little sneaky owl present, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Hilary. I absolutely love that. And now that I've shown everyone, I can put it into my drawer of shawls for use. Not that I'm going to be using it much until around September, I imagine. Um, I also had a lovely parcel from Lizzie. And I, this arrived ages ago and I've just completely forgotten to sort of tell you about it because I had to pack it away because of the bedroom renovation. So she sent me some lovely, lovely yarn and she sent me this gorgeous bag. Look at this. If you're wondering why you keep seeing lobsters pop up and you're new here, it's because I have a slight obsession with lobsters. I love them. I've, they're in decoration a lot around my house. Um, it's to do with my husband and I, it's just been our thing, lobsters. Um, so she sent me this absolutely gorgeous bag. And that's the tag on it. Oh, it's always nice after I've shown you these things because it means I can start using them. Um, and she sent me some lovely sock yarn, which is all lovely. It's like West York, yeah, like some commercial opal and West Yorkshire spinners and so on. So that is fantastic because they're just perfect for making socks for the family and so on. But she sent me some lovely hand dyed as well by two of my absolutely favourite dyers. The first one, lovely Helen at Giddy Yarns. And this was one from one of her um, like yarn clubs. Oh no, it isn't. No, that's complete nonsense. I don't know why I said that. It's called Poo Sticks, which couldn't be more perfect because we play Poo Sticks whenever we can find a suitable bridge. <laughs> Giddy Yarns. Uh, Helen is uh, Giddy Yarns here on YouTube as well. Um, I love her hand dyed stuff. And this is one of her DK, so I can make another pair of my Heath mitts if I wanted. But I love to um, have more DK in my sash. Um, and this is a particularly gorgeous one. The colours are just lovely. The colours of 100 acre wood, I would say. <laughs> Which isn't actually far from here. On 100 acre wood, if I'm not wrong, is actually... Ashdown Forest. Um, and the other gorgeous one, this is a uh, the Compa Companion Soul, spelled S-O-L-E, base, which is a sock base, 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, by Third Vault Yarns. Yay! I'm so excited by this. The colourway I can't quite read. I'm pretty sure it says Corones obsidian which is going to be a reference to either a film a game or a program which i don't understand but i'm sure lots of you will be able to tell me what that means <laughs> but look at this <gasps> how amazing is that these are going to make the most glorious socks i haven't made socks in ages have you noticed i haven't talked about making socks in ages and i've started to feel that little urge it must be the change in weather because it's such a simple small portable project anyway she also sent me some books which she said I can keep or use for um, giveaways or prizes. 
So I've got, <laughs> this is such a funny book, Edward's Menagerie by Kerry Lord, Birds. I've got all these ridiculous birds. <laughs> Oh, I love them so much. They're so funny. Um, I've got a couple of Kerry Lord's books and they're always really good. So that's her birds. And let's, this is, I've never seen anything like this. Let's Go Camping by Kate Brunning. Crochet your own adventure. And it's kind of, uh, the pictures have all got uh, Playmobil um, things. There's something about this that just makes me want to make little miniature things. My kids are kind of past Playmobil now, but Phoebe still loves Sylvanians. Look at that on the back where you can make your own little um, caravan. Oh, just, I love stuff like that, little miniature things. Anyway, I'll, I shall have a look, proper look through and decide, but um, I, so the, I probably use one or both of these as a prize for the Amiolon at the end of quarter two. So um, yeah, keep, keep your eyes peeled. And she sent me some gorgeous chocolate. She sent me some Whitaker's chocolate. Oh, she sent me all kinds of different ones. So, oh, and I've, I've had these waiting so I could talk about them before I can eat them. Peanut slab, hokey pokey, they're all little mini Whitaker's chocolates. I feel very fortunate to have had people, um, I think it's the, it's the main chocolate brand in New Zealand, basically. Um, Lizzie's in New Zealand. And, um, yeah, that little stamp on the front. Thank you, Fanny. There's a little thank you for the vlogs and the podcast. Um, and it is gorgeous, and I feel very lucky to have been on the receiving end of Whitaker's chocolate because it is absolutely beautiful. I love it so much, um, and I'm definitely going to have one of these after my lunch today. And, and by the way, I should have said as well that this little project bag with its label on it, so she did, um, was originally a tea towel. <laughs> and um, Lizzie herself took the tea towel and turned it into this amazing little project bag. So, yeah, I'm really thrilled with that. I'm going to use it to make um, whatever project I make with some of this yarn will go in here. Keep it all together. So thank you so much, Lizzie. I feel really, really lucky to have received that. Very, very spoiled indeed. Oh, I'm, just, I'm looking at that chocolate. It's making my tummy rumble. I'm like, I wonder, if I stuff some in my mouth now, though, I won't be able to talk. Okay, how are we all doing? Are we all keeping up? Uh, I hope we're... Um, enjoying whatever project you're working on. Are you knitting? Are you crocheting? Maybe you're just sitting down, glad that the kids are back at school. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the make-along. So the main, uh, well, the most current make-along that we've got going on at the moment is the Dodgy Bag Mao 2021. This is a make-along that I run with lovely, lovely Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. And um, and I should say, one of the biggest changes is we were originally going to have a thread each. Claudia was going to have the FO thread and I was going to have the chatter thread. And then we just, Claudia's sort of coming off Ravelry. Um, and we thought, actually, that's a bit faffy anyway, isn't it? So we just put the chatter and FO thread all in one go. So if you're taking part and you've got an FO, go and post it in the thread that's linked underneath. It's in my Ravelry group. Or use the hashtag on Instagram. And that's how you join in. Um, there are so many um, creations popping up in that thread and under the hashtag on Instagram. I, I was having a really good browse through over the last couple of days. Um, there was a lady, Janine Rose, I don't know how to say it, has made a load, I think she's made about 10 sort of selvage, bucket bags with the selvages of fabric. They are so lovely. Um, she did put in the Instagram posts what the um, pattern was. So I will put the, her Instagram name if you want to go and have a little look at her feed on the screen. And in the Ravelry thread, there are absolutely loads appearing. I have been woefully bad, actually, because I had intended to make three or four bags. I've only made one. And one of those I only finished this morning before like eight o'clock in the morning, because I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to finish it so I can show it on the podcast. Then I realised after I'd finished it that I hadn't put interfacing in it. So it is a genuine dodgy bag. I made it for Dan. There's no drawstring in it yet. I made it for Dan because he wants me to teach him how to knit socks with some gorgeous Star Wars fabric, um, which was a gift from Loma and Echo in uh, Blue Earth, Minnesota. I think they're here on YouTube as well. Um, they sent me a load of Star Wars fabric because they know Dan's a fan and I just sort of fashioned it into a bag and I'm really, really pleased with it. But I had intended to interface it and completely forgot in my hurry. It's going to be a drawstring bag. It's got the drawstrings here. 
and the yarn I've looked at some yarn for my stash for him I, I wanted to choose quite a light color and variegated so that you know I just find that easier when someone's learning or when I was learning if some of the stitches happen to be different colors I don't know it helps me count and so on so I've got some hot socks here um, hot socks print I think these were a gift this might have been a gift from Annette again in Denmark um, so this is going to be what Dan uses so this is going to be what Dan uses to make his first pair of socks hopefully if we don't get divorced in the teaching so I'll pop those in there I'll do a drawstring for him later and I think I'm going to order him instead of giving him some needles that I've already got I think I'm going to get some wooden ones because I think that might be a bit easier while he's learning because they won't be as slippery so he's nearly all set I could teach him over summer couldn't I um, yeah, so, and I was going to make a couple of other bags from another little um, bag design that I've kind of made up, um, but I just haven't got around to doing it. It's just been, it's just been, I haven't had a chance to do anything hardly. It's been so busy, but I don't want to keep saying that because I don't want to glorify, I'm not trying to glorify being busy because that's not a good thing. I would much rather be boasting about how much time I've got because I've been so organised that I don't, you know, that I can actually fit the things I want to into my days, but that's not the case. So I'm not glorifying being busy, I'm just sort of saying I'm not organised enough to be able to do what I want to do. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that's the dodgy bag mount. Runs, I think, until the 7th of June. Can't remember, it's only my own make-along. Why would I know the dates? Uh, but I'll, I always shut the thread too late anyway, so you've got, you've got until halfway through June, let's just say. Uh, well, first week, probably the end of the first week of June, I'll close it because I know that Claudia will want to draw her winner. Um, so you've got plenty of time still to make a bag. I've linked some tutorials underneath and hopefully on the screen that I've got on this channel for how to make a drawstring bag like the one you've just seen or a, a set with a box bottom. That one doesn't have a box bottom or a zipped bag. I'm just going to plug my camera in. <sighs> okay, it's plugged in. Whether or not it's charging, I'm not sure. It's been a bit weird recently. Um, Yes, yeah, so you've got plenty of time to join in and there's tutorials underneath, there's lots of chatter going on in the thread and yeah, come and make a dodgy bag. Can't be any more dodgy than the ones I make, so you might as well. <laughs> you might win a prize. <laughs> um, I've spoken about the prizes before and I'll talk about them in the next episode. I've also got the Ami along going along uh, going on, which was supposed to finish on the 31st of March, but we had so much fun, I decided to just run it for the rest of the year and draw a prize at the end of each quarter. So that's going to be fun because it means I'll, we'll get different sort of seasonal things throughout the year because um, Christmas is a good time for amigurumi, isn't it? So there's still lots of amazing amigurumi creations popping up. And I should say that uh, knit, knit items as well as crochet are perfectly welcome. You're welcome to add your knitted creations. Um, I just wanted to share a couple from the Ravelry thread that had amused me. <laughs> so Joby Jane's Pheasant Sock Bird. Just had so much personality, I thought he was lovely. Um, Lydia's Homestead did a test mermaid pattern. She didn't link a pattern for this, but she said it was a test. She says she does a lot of testing for designers. Um, but oh, it was lovely. Such a lovely sort of size and just really, really nice. So I just, that really stood out for me. And um, nudie branches and reversible octos continue to be um much loved in the thread oh now my camera's overheating as well i've got all kinds of red lights on my screen um yeah so they're, they're really good fun to see nudie branches are sea slugs but they're really spectacular and fabulous they're like the drag queens of the deep sea and um yeah reversible octos where one side it's happy one side it's angry i need to make some amigurumi because like i say we're going to be going to scotland in august and we drive, we drive from Kent to Scotland, it takes about eight hours, um, all in all. So I always make the back of the girls a little travel bag with, with things that they can um, you know, do or just things to keep them amused. And I always do a little handmade creature in there as well. So I need to make a little amigurumi and I'm wondering if I might do one of those reversible octos because I think they'll love that. They both got reversible you know, octos that we bought them, but a crocheted one, I think they would love even more. So I'm, watch this space. I also, I've got a load of books that I want to be making stuff from. There's not enough time in the day. If I ever won the lottery, I would give up work immediately. I would never be one of those people that would say I would keep working. I would fill my days beginning to end, beginning to end. I would never be bored. 
Okay, I'm going to turn my camera off for 20 minutes and let it cool down and uh, go and reheat my tea because I've been talking so much it's gone cold. And then I will be back in the blink of an eye for you with books and stuff. Okay, I am back. Hopefully my camera has uh, had time to cool down. Uh, books and stuff. Okay, here's where I tell you everything I'm sort of reading, watching, listening to, enjoying. So TV at the moment. Dan and I have been watching, uh, well, we, we've just finished binge watching the latest series of Line of Duty. Um, even though, yeah, is it the last series of Line of Duty? It's a police thriller drama thing. Um, is I think this is its fifth series. I can't remember. We've watched them all, uh, but I don't think this was the best series. We enjoyed it as ever, um, but um, yeah, it wasn't the best series. But slightly less violent than usual, which is good because I don't really watch violent things. Line of Duty was the only exception, really. <laughs> so I quite like the lack of too much violence. Um, so, but yeah, we've we've binge watched that lot. Um, we just finished binge watching series two and three of Motherland, which is literally the most cringy, funniest thing on telly. It's so good. It's a series about a bunch of parents in the UK, mainly mothers and a, and a stay at home dad um, at, and at the school gates and their relationship. But they're all like really over the top caricatures of the different types of people that you might meet at the school gates. And they're all just really quite awful people. <laughs> <laughs> just, and it is ever so funny though and it really does address the kind of things that happen when you're a parent to young children particularly when you've got kids at primary school and the things you have to do and getting involved with the PA and the different types of personalities that you come across we absolutely love it Dan has to watch it from behind something he has a cushion or he pulls his t-shirt up because he just finds it so cringy uh, but I, I, I just think it's brilliant and we've also started watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine right from the beginning again. Uh, Dan and I have obviously, we've watched it right up to the most recent, but um, Lilia, we finished watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with our 15 year old Lilia. And she really wanted to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine because her friends have all been talking about it. So we started from the beginning. So she's been introduced to the world of Captain Holt and Amy Santiago and Jake and Peralta and, 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 it and everyone and just loving it because it's one of the funniest things on television and it never it never stops being funny it just it's, it was on a level from episode one and series one and it just kept that level um yeah she's really enjoying that we all we all are it's really nice to go back and watch them again and just remember how good all the episodes were um books i am still reading i'm about halfway through um valley Valley of the Horses, Valley of Horses, The Valley of the Horses by Jean M. Owl. Thank you to the person who gave me the pronunciation in the last episode. Um, it has been hard going, sort of the last few chapters. I have felt sometimes like I'm reading a boat building manual. <laughs> it's kind of two separate stories at the moment. You've got the story of two, um, I'm guessing, Cro-Magnon Cro brothers and the story of Cro-Magnon Ayla, who has up until this point only known life with Neanderthals um, and you know that they're going to meet at some point but I'm halfway through and they haven't met so it's like reading two separate books um, it is good I am enjoying it um, and I'm looking forward to the story taking off a bit more um, once the, those two stories sort of come together um, yeah so that's really good um, it's the second book in the Earth Children series the first one being Clan of the Cave Bear which I absolutely loved um, I am still enjoying my Everyday Nature book. I realise I never really mentioned this. It looks a bit different because for my birthday, um, I did a deal with my friend Gaynor. Um, if you don't know Gaynor, my friend Gaynor is Tales from Cuckoo Land here on YouTube. Um, she's, she's just such a lovely human. And on my, we did a deal that I would buy her this book, which is Everyday Nature by Andy Beer for her birthday, but I bought it for her really early um, so that she could enjoy the book. And in return, she made me a cover for my book because um, I was complaining that it didn't have a bookmark. So she made me a cover with an integrated bookmark. So now I can keep my place where I am in the day. I'm a couple of days behind actually. And it's the most beautiful thing. It's linen, it's embroidered. It will keep my book looking good for years. And when I leave it on my table in the kitchen, it just looks like a picture. It's lovely. And this book basically gives you uh, a story from nature or a fact from nature 
combined with beautiful illustrations for every single day of the year. Now it's very much a UK based book. Um, I forget to say that sometimes. Obviously the, the books that I have on nature and the environment around us are very much UK based because that's where I live. Um, so I don't know how well it would translate to other places. Look at the illustration there, the, it's a kestrel. And it gives you a little bit of information about whether it's an animal, a flower, a weed, um, a festival, a fruit, something that's in season or happening in nature for every single day. And what I hadn't expected, I expected it to be informative, I expected it to be pretty with the illustrations. I hadn't expected, to, expected it to be so light-hearted and funny and just um, like I'm having a chat with a friend rather than a sort of, it's not a scientific book, it's talking to you like a really funny, knowledgeable friend. And I can't recommend this book highly enough. I read it every single day and sometimes I get a couple of days behind and then I really like that because I've got two or more to read in one go. So, and I'm learning a lot from it as well. Like I know he'll mention a weed or a, something that's in season and I'll know what to look out for when I'm out and about. So it's, it's fantastic, this book. I'm also reading um, a chapter, well, a chapter, a section or two a day of a book I got for my birthday. I did a vlog about um, my birthday. We went for a little day out on the Kentish coast and I took you with us on my uh, This Little Wonderful Life ch uh, channel. I'll link it underneath if you're interested. And I talked about all the books and presents and things that I got there. And this was one of the books that I got for my husband. It's an illustrated journey by Danny Gregory. He's an urban sketcher. And these are the stories um, from many, many artists. I don't know if it says how many. 40. 40 artists, you get a good few pages, you get um, examples of their sketchbooks, they're basically letting you into their own personal travel sketchbooks and they talk about what sketching and travelling mean to them. That looks like Steve Reddy. Sorry, hold on. Tangent. I want to know if I'm right or wrong. I was right! <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe I just recognised someone by their work. Oh, I feel so proud of myself. Steve Reddy is a guy that wrote a book that basically got me back into drawing. Um, I, that, him and um, Alfonso Dunn on YouTube. So Steve Reddy wrote a book called Everyday Sketching and Drawing and it just changed my life for getting back into the sketching that I really wanted to get back into. Uh, I can't believe he's in this book and that I recognised his drawing just from the random page I opened. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and then later on I discovered a channel here on YouTube um, by an artist called Alfonso Dunn who just teaches you different techniques about tone and shading and so on. Um, and I can tell I'm going off on too much of a tangent because my camera is now overheating again. Uh, but yeah, basically to say I am absolutely loving this book and if you're interested in sketching and journal, um, uh, not, not journaling but um, keeping a, a sketch journal, you know, a travel journal, a life journal. Um, oh, this is full of inspiration, such inspiration about how artists got to where they are now and why and what it means to them and the tools that they use and the techniques that they favour and so on. I love it. Okay, listening to. I'm continuing to listen to Black and British by David Olisoga. I have finally found my place again. It's a really long book and uh, it's the, I'm listening to the audio version, read by the absolutely brilliant Cobner Holbrook Smith, who is a, I think he's an, a Ghanaian actor, a Brit uh, Ghanaian British actor, um, who popped up in Motherland. He was there, he was, uh, he was a guy in a cafe, and I was looking at him thinking, I know that guy, I recognise him, his voice is familiar, and I looked him up, and of course it was the guy that reads Black and British as the audio book. Um, I finally found my place, so I'm back to listening to that in the car. I'm up to about the um, early 1800s now. It's an absolutely fascinating book. And the children's version of the book, or the young people's version of the book, which is called Black and British, A Short Essential History, has just won an award, um, I think, for best children's book from a penguin, I think. I may be wrong. I shared it on Instagram, I can't remember the details. So that's brilliant, because we, we have that version as well, which I read with um, Phoebe. And I'm hoping that Leah's gonna read that on her own. She's a big reader. Um, she certainly seems interested, but at the moment, Phoebe and I are reading that. 
And somebody, Amanda, I think it was, recommended, got me onto a podcast called The Stubborn Light of Things, which some of you may have already heard of. It was um, recorded last year um, from March all the way into autumn every week, uh, where she's a, she's a naturalist and an author. Um, oh God, what's her name? <laughs> I can't remember the name of the girl that does it. Oh, goodness sake. She, she is a novelist as well. I'll put her name on the screen uh, so that I don't jab her on so much that my camera overheats again. Uh, but she's lovely to listen to. She's so knowledgeable. Um, it just puts me in touch with the, with the natural world. I feel like I'm there with her. I kind of caught up to where she was for this week, but last year. So I've kind of rationed it because I want to listen to it as though, you know, as she takes us through the seasons, I want to listen to her at the right time. Um, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I wish she was doing it again this year. It's fantastic. So if you're in the market for a lovely nature-based podcast, particularly if you're in the UK, because she talks a lot about how UK wildlife is changing, um, then the stubborn light of things I would highly recommend. Okay, that's finished with and finally, which is the bit at the end where I just mop up everything else. So just to mention that Phoebe's tree pins are all sold out. Thank you so much if you chose to support her with her uh, first uh, foray into design of uh, enamel pins. We've got more on the way and they should be here in the first week of June. So as soon as they're here, I shall list them in the Etsy shop. And thanks to everyone who's been asking when they'll be available again. We do have the badge version. We've got lots of those um, because I was aware that uh, we'd had a lot of requests for things like scout groups and girl guiding and, and uh, schools and things. So I ordered a big batch of the badges, which are fairly low cost at £1.50. So there's lots of those in the shop. And uh, there's more than I, that then shows in stock. I, I only ever list a certain amount of stock in case I run out. I get nervous. Postcards are in the shop at the moment as well and various other things. Uh, but yeah, keep an eye short of around the first, second week of June and you'll see the enamel pins um, coming up again. Thank you so much. I wanted to mention my friend uh, Lily, who used to podcast as Nordic Stitches about all things knitting and sometimes crochet. She no longer does that. She's moved on to pastures new. But she asked the other day when we were chatting on WhatsApp if I would mind mentioning that all of her patterns, because she did, she designed a huge amount of patterns, socks, shawls, hats, mitts, everything, are still very much available on Ravelry to purchase. And they're all at really, really reduced prices. I had a little look yesterday to see what she meant by really reduced. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got like Selby mitten patterns for under a pound, like about 75p or something. Um, and they're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. And most of her sock patterns are really low price. And even her sort of bundle collections where you get like several patterns in one, some of them are like as low as three pounds. So if you're, if you're looking for a bargain, head to Lily's shop. I will link it underneath. But I wanted to give that a mention because, you know, it's always nice to shop for patterns, isn't it? <laughs> Um, and a few people asked me about, I've had a few comments recently asking me about my drawing because obviously I do talk about how I'm trying to get back into drawing and sort of a lack of confidence in that area and returning to it. Um, there, there was things that happened in my earlier sort of secondary school life that I think kind of led me away from art a little bit and it's only recently that I've started to kind of address those in my mind. Maybe I'll talk about that on my other channel another time. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that I did speak a little bit about what I draw in my latest vlog episode over on This Little Wonderful Life. So I'll link it underneath because I included at the end a little time lapse drawing of me drawing a building in Westgate on Sea where we'd been for a walk that day. Um, and it was really fun to do. It was really satisfying afterwards to watch as well. And I had really good feedback on it. So if you do want to find out a little bit more, I'll link that underneath. And that's it. I am done. My camera's about to explode. It's flashing all kinds of lights at me now. Um, I, hope you're, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all coping with either the transition out of lockdown or I know many people are going back into lockdowns or whatever's happening in your part of the world. I hope that you're managing to, to cope well with it. Um, where would we be without our crochet and our knitting? Eh? I don't know how the people that don't have those things in their lives have coped this past year. I, for one, feel extraordinarily grateful to have those things that I love um, in my life to keep me keep my hands busy and my mind occupied yeah thank goodness we've got them so happy knitting happy crocheting wherever you are in the world and I will see you again in a couple of weeks time <laughs>